Okay, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. It's the, the new Corvette over there. I'm gonna go talk to her. Just, I mean, she's, she's way out of my league. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go say hey. Play it cool. Be cool. Okay, here we go. New Corvette. Hey, what's up? Oh, God. What is going on YouTube? It is a crisp, beautiful day here in Atlanta. Finally, finally, because it's been absolute trash for like the past month. But it is a beautiful morning and it is my favorite morning. It is one of my favorite days of the year. I'm gonna tell you why. So why is it one of my favorite days of the year? Because it is Auto Show Day, the Atlanta International Auto Show, where people like me who love cars get to go into a big room and hear about cars and play with cars and there's nobody around. It's media day, so the public isn't here and we just get to basically poke and prod and get in and get out and look at every aspect of a ton of cars, hundreds of cars. What could be better than that? This is like my dream day of the year. So let's get to it. So the auto show is held every year at the Georgia World Congress Center, which is absolutely enormous. Uh, one of the biggest empty spaces, uh, well, in the state, uh, if not the country. Uh, and so it's in this exhibit hall where there are literally hundreds of cars inside uh, for us to play with. I'm going to media day right now, so I've got to go check in. And then we're gonna go hear some presentations from some of the manufacturers about some of their newer models. And uh, I'm gonna take you along for the ride. One of my favorite things about coming to media day is when you first walk in and you have the place all to yourself, more or less. I mean, there's other journalists here and presentations, but this is the only time you get to come into this space with this many cars in it. And there's no crowd, there's no one to get in your way. There's nobody going, hey, Ma, look at the front seat of this car and sitting in it for nine hours while they push all the buttons. This is just for you to come in and be an enthusiast and enjoy all these manufacturers have to offer. It's, it's really a special experience. And if you've never been to an auto show, I highly recommend it. If you've never been to the Atlanta Auto Show and you live in the Southeast, I highly recommend it. I can't wander too far away because Fiat Chrysler is the first presentation, but check out this deep color behind me. I'm kind of okay with that. I, I don't know why. I think it looks kind of good. It would look really good at the beach with no doors and no roof. And I say that because I am the ultimate poser. I know nothing about going off-road. I just want to take the doors and the roof off and drive around in posing glory. One of the things that's always true about coming to the auto show is the lighting is great for an event. It's terrible for video, so we're gonna do the best we can. But uh, overall, it's not the most photography, videography friendly. It's, it's not great for photo and video is what I'm trying to say. Someday when the world melts down, I'm convinced there's going to be like rocks, roaches, and um, challengers. One of the things that's interesting about the Jeep Gladiator Mojave Edition is that a lot of the features on it are specific to desert running. 
It's got custom tires and shocks. Even the seats are designed to hold you in place better than the regular Wrangler Gladiator seats because they expect you're gonna be running around the desert in it. It's got a higher front end. One thing I didn't know about the Jeep Special models is that the colors actually signify things. It just shows you how ignorant I am about Jeeps. But apparently orange is the new sort of Mojave co color that shows that it's desert rated, sand rated. So everything has been custom tuned for that, including the four wheel drive system, which allows you to run four low at a much higher speed, like 50 miles an hour, which if you know anything about off-roading is a thing that you can do now. One thing I have to wonder though, is sort of how specific they can keep making these models. I mean, I know the Jeep community is very faithful and very loyal to their brand, but having a specific model for desert running is pretty crazy. It seems like an awfully small niche. It's like if Chevy made a 95 Blazer for divorced dads, because that's what they would drive. So what I'm really hoping is that one of these days, Jeep makes a I'm a total poser dad edition, because if they're gonna subdivide into Rubicon and Mojave, I would like them to subdivide into my category, which is a dad who never goes off-road but wants to take all the doors in the roof off and pretend that he goes off-road. So Jeep, if you are listening, poser dad edition. You could also make the mall crawling edition, which would have all the doors in the roof back on it for all the moms who drive them to the mall. I think we could be onto something here. So the story with Alfa Romeo is the redesigned interior, which is loaded with a lot more tech than before. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, obviously Alfa Romeo is well known for their performance capabilities and all that. Um, they're also kind of well known for their reliability issues. So the increased tech is something that you probably would want to be wary of, but it does make the car a little bit more compelling than it was previously. So now we're heading over to the next stop, which is Nissan. So the big news at Nissan is the all new Nissan Sentra, which if we're being honest, is kind of a long time coming. The old Sentra was pretty gross and the new Sentra looks a lot better. And it seems like Nissan's kind of leading on the sort of safety and technology front. They're including a lot of stuff as standard on the Sentra now, including their safety suite. That's sort of their 360 degrees of, of safety. And it comes on the base model. A lot of the stuff in the presentation was for the base model car, which is impressive and it provides a lot of value. So it seems like they're sort of moving the Sentra into that direction of sort of providing a lot for the money. Um, in addition to being far, far better looking. So the Nissan GTR, this is the 50th anniversary edition of the Nissan GTR, which I can only assume means because this car is 50 years old. Like seriously, this car is like a Motley Crue reunion tour. It's like, yeah, we're still gonna go, but like you guys are like 60 and you need to retire. Like we're always wondering what are they gonna do next? What is Tommy Lee gonna do next? How has the drugs not killed him yet? How has the boost not killed this car yet? But GTR, it's, it's time to go, it's time to go. The thing about the Sentra that sort of remains to be seen is how it's gonna stack up to an aging Honda Civic and a somewhat new Toyota Corolla. Obviously in this space, you know, small sedans are kind of dying out. So it's important that they have the Sentra and it does look good and it's full of useful tech and safety but you're up against some of the best small cars in the business with the Civic and the Mazda 3. So will the Sentra be competitive? I don't know. Hopefully I'll get behind the wheel of a tester and you know, kind of report back and see how it stacks up to the main competition. So I obviously have a soft spot in my heart for the Chevy Corvette and seeing it in person, finally, finally seeing it in person. This actually kind of means a lot to me. I'm, I'm a huge Corvette fan. I love Corvettes. And obviously if you love Corvettes, you know that the talk about them switching to mid-engine has been going on for quite some time and to finally see it in person to finally see them get there and to actually make a mid-engine Corvette and not just make a mid-engine Corvette make a car that looks this compelling this complete this beautiful inside and out it's it's truly special it's really uh, an amazing example of everything the Corvette brand has become over the past 60 70 years it's it's just insane to see it finally come to fruition and to be this good I just can't get over the way the new Corvette looks. Honestly, I didn't know what to make of it when I saw it in pictures for the first time. We were all kind of, you know, jury is out until you see it in person. But after seeing it in person, it lives up to the hype and then some. 
Obviously, the performance numbers are well documented at this point, as is the engine output, as are the rumors of the Z06 and the Zora, but this is an extremely compelling car, and it begs the question, why would you get anything else for the price? Like, uh, <laughs> Supra, who? Like, why? For sixty to seventy thousand dollars in base trim, you get the performance options up to seventy to eighty thousand, and it'll pretty much flat smoke anything on the road. So why would you get anything else on the road? So I'm very curious to know what you think about the new Corvette. Do you think it lives up to the hype? Obviously, some of the first drive videos are dropping now. You saw some from Engineering Explained and Amelia Hartford and the straight pipes. What do you think of the new Corvette? Do you think that the combination of performance and value is as compelling as people say it is? I hope that some of us mortals can get to drive it soon. I'm not sure if they uh, loan out press cars to people with lowly 34,000 subscriber channels, but if they do, I will be the first to come back and tell you whether or not a lifelong Corvette fan thinks it lives up to the height. Also, this lighting sucks. Now, if the new Corvette is my favorite car at the auto show, the Mustang Mach-E might be the most surprising. This is a really interesting car, like really interesting. Obviously, we all saw the hype around it. We all saw the pictures. I think it looks pretty good in person, to be honest with you, better than I thought it was gonna look. And the stats on it are compelling, but it's the actual interior. When you sit in it, you see the room. I'm 6'6", and I could sit behind myself. And there's about a CRV RAV4 level of cargo space, and you have the front trunk. So this has the potential of being an extremely useful car fully electric, incredibly fast. If Ford can deliver on even three-fourths of these claims in mileage or whatever, this could be one of the biggest selling mass-produced EVs and maybe finally challenge Tesla. We'll have to wait and see, but this is a very surprising and very compelling car. Also, let's be honest, it looks pretty good, actually. I think the front-end styling is not bad at all. The interior looks really cool with sort of the minimalistic, typical EV approach, but they do a good job with that sloping roofline of hiding how much headspace this car has. Um, in the pictures, you sort of follow the painted line and you're like, wow, it's a really sleek car. But if you look closely, the black accent at the top actually provides more headroom. It's really smart packaging in what is a very usable size. It's not too big, it's not too small. This is a really interesting car, guys. I, I am I am definitely looking forward to get behind the wheel of one of these. Also, side note, I injured my shoulder at the gym the other day. This isn't a subtle flex, it's just the truth. And uh, vlogging is killing me right now. But I'm gonna persevere. I'm gonna persevere for you because you want to know what a bunch of stationary parked cars are like. And I'm gonna give that content to you because I will persevere through this injury as long as I don't drop my So ironically here on two sides, you have a struggling brand, Nissan, and you have a brand that's kind of crushing it right now, which is Kia. In fact, is there any brand that's crushing it as well as Kia is right now? They have one of the hottest SUVs out with the Telluride. They have the really good looking Seltos. They've got the Stinger, which deserves more respect. And they've got the Sportage and the Nero and just a bunch of cars that are really compelling, really interesting, great value, good looking. I, I don't know if there's any company that's on more of a roll right now than Kia is. And I had a Telluride to test a while back and it's still to this day, Mrs. Jax's favorite car. And it's deservedly the best three row SUV in the class right now. So this is the calm before the storm. We are about... I was just about to say that. We're about 15 minutes away from the show opening, which is what they're announcing right now. And then this gigantic exhibit hall will be filled with people, car shopping, poking, prodding, looking around, auto enthusiasts, all kinds of people. And it gets much more difficult to take pictures and video. It's not that I don't think the Gladiator is cool. It's just that I think the proportions are a little awkward. There's something about it that doesn't quite work. Like it's not all coming together in the right way. Maybe I'm in the minority, but I'm not particularly enamored with the way the new Toyota Highlander looks. I think it's just kind of a little too bulbous, a little too rounded. It lacks kind of the macho image of the Telluride. It doesn't quite have the identity, I think, in a crowded segment. And, and I think that's true of a lot of SUVs in this segment, but I think the Highlander's exterior design just doesn't quite come together the way that I think it needs to. I really don't like those sort of bulbous flanks. I, I used the word bulbous twice. That's right, I did that. That's okay. Bulbous is a thing. I don't like the way the flanks are trying to mimic the Supra because 
It's not a Supra, and the Supra's not particularly good looking either, if we're being honest. So they have this Supra Heritage Edition here, which is sort of playing on your 90s fantasies of like what the Supra probably should have looked like from the get-go. I would argue that whatever that cost, if they ever come out with it, is not going to be worth it compared to a C8 Corvette. However, if you are sort of a JDM Supra fanboy and you're digging it, this might be the exact thing that you like. On the flip side, why don't all Supras look like this? This looks 10 times better than the regular Supra. Let's just make that the Supra. Hey look, it's my Civic test car. Hey look, it's my Passport test car. All right, one of the hottest luxury car debuts has been the Genesis GV. Um, it is a really cool looking luxury SUV and they have one here. So I'm gonna go take a look at it real quick and see what all the hype is all about. Y'all, can we take a second and appreciate this Genesis? Hold on. Is it a GV80? Y'all, can we take a second and talk about this Genesis GV80? This thing is insane. Like, I mean, like for real, insane. The quality, the look, the paint, the interior, all of it, it's, it's mind-blowing, like, like mind-blowing. I mean, Genesis is kind of on the come up, but this is on another level. Like this is seriously impressive. Like why would you buy an Urus or a Bentley or whatever, unless you want to flash the badge because you're insecure with yourself. And that's okay because self-esteem is earned. But this, this is cool. So we're back walking the show floor. The show is open now, which means the crowd is in here, which means it's louder and there's more uh, people because that's what a crowd is. Anyway, I'm gonna go around and see if I can find anything else interesting before I go. I've got about 15 minutes of footage left. Uh, let's see if we can use it up. New Corvette is drawing a predictably big crowd. I always feel so scattered when I'm in here. Like, I don't know where to go. I'm just sort of haphazardly wandering around talking to a camera, which everybody looks at you weird, even though this is the quintessential YouTube setup, but everybody still looks at you like you're some kind of freak. Am I a freak? Am I? Do you ever notice at auto shows that the music varies between excitement or sort of calm, like you're in some sort of spa or something. One of the things I like about the Atlanta show is that Caffeine and Octane always brings out some of the coolest cars at the show, and they're all local. They're all people that live here in Atlanta. These are their cars, and they always have one of the coolest selections of cars. So it's kind of like a little hometown pride, you know? Caffeine and Octane, one of the nation's biggest car shows, bringing out some of the coolest cars in the show, representing Atlanta. Something that I think is really, really cool. So this Viper right here is one of one that is that color purple. It's owned by Grimace from McDonald's. I'm just kidding. That joke, like only about 7% of you got because most of you are too young to get that joke. But it is one of one and any car that is one of one is cool by default. This Rolls Royce is also one of one for many reasons that are on this sign that I won't read to you. But it is also one of one Rolls Royces that are like this one. One of the things I've mentioned in past videos is that we are only a few years away from me having to get my oldest a car. And this Kia Seltos that just came out is definitely kind of at the top of the list. I think it's a pretty interesting small SUV that comes with a lot of content. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping an eye on the Seltos uh, as we get closer and closer to my oldest driving, which is a terrifying thought for many, many reasons. The least of which is she'll be driving a car. There's a few companies that are in a desperate need for sort of a, uh, renaissance, a revival, and I think maybe first and foremost among them is uh, Infinity. Infinity's product lineup is um, not strong. Uh, and by not strong, I mean awful. Like, they just don't have any compelling products. It's really kind of sad. This is a company that, you know, 20 years ago, sadly, almost 20 years ago, had the G35, and it was a revolution. Revelation. Revelation, not a revolution. A revolution would have been a lot more violent, but a revelation is what the G35 was. And now, they don't really offer much of anything that's that interesting, unfortunately. Kind of keeping in this whole theme of small, affordable SUVs that I might buy my future driver, this new Trailblazer is pretty good looking, to be honest with you. I hadn't seen it in person. It's pretty tiny. It's a lot smaller than the Blazer, and they called it the Trailblazer. Is it just me, or do I think that the Trailblazer should be the bigger one and the Blazer should be the smaller one? Maybe I'm putting too much thought into this SUV naming conventions. At least they're not alphanumeric. 
messes like the Toyota CHRPQL, why did you buy this 956? The idea of a rough and ready forerunner is awesome. Like the forerunner is just cool. It's one of those cars that is an enduring symbol of adventure and off road prowess. This is a cool car. This is not. This is like a fake, rugged Sequoia. That's not cool. Forerunner was cool. This, not so much. I actually really like Hyundai. I, I want them to win, but I, I think their styling is getting a little bit weird. Um, the new Venue is not as good looking as the Seltos. Uh, and the new Sonata, I just saw the front end. Something about it looks like a fish to me, like a, like a sort of angry fish. Like, you know, Finding Nemo was like Finding Nemo 2, the, the vengeance or something. I just, I don't know, but the interior is amazing. The interior is gorgeous. Still like to drive one. Don't hate Hyundai. I'm sorry. I just, you know. But yeah, something is just not quite working for me when it comes to Hyundai's evolving design language. Like the Palisades front end or the venues, most of it. I wasn't 100% sold on Cadillac's new design language until seeing it in person, especially on the CT5. I think the CT5 actually looks really good. The CT4 looks a little small. Um, I'm not 100% sold on the small SUVs, but the new design language with the sort of horizontal vertical headlights and taillights kind of works. It's pretty good looking, and apparently the reviews on the CT5 are pretty good, so hey, Cadillac, hook me up, maybe? Possibly? You, you could? I think the uh, Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport is pretty good looking. Um, unfortunately, this one is stuck here. It's not on the podium. It just happened to break down there. What, what? Is there any brand that sort of transformed its image in such a short amount of time better than Lincoln has? I mean, the Lincoln products now are like in a different league from how they were before. I mean, the Navigator, of course, but the Aviator's amazing, and so is the Lincoln Corsair. The interior of the Corsair is insane at that sort of price point. They are really making some big moves in quality and design. Genesis is a brand on the move with some really cool styling, some really luxurious interiors, and some really compelling performance features. The GV80 is amazing. So is the, uh, the big one. Maybe we need to work on this branding thing. It's the G90, it's the G90, I knew that. I'm just kidding, it was the G90. I knew that all along. I didn't need to check the back end of the car to see what it was called. Don't get me wrong, I love Honda. They're one of my favorites. Always have, always will. But there's nothing really new over here. We need something new, okay? Like, I mean, the Type R is like seriously at the top of my dad list of dream cars, but I want there to be something else, like maybe a CRV Type R. Don't laugh, that's not as stupid as it sounds. I think a CRV Type R could be a thing. Mark my words. Actually, don't mark my words. It's probably never gonna be a thing, but I just said that because it sounded authoritative and that's what I'm supposed to be doing. If you buy a Subaru, you get a free dog. They're giving away a dog. I'm just kidding, that's not true at all. You don't get a free dog. All right, Ford, you got me. I don't care how much of a Corvette guy I am. The GT500 is seriously seriously cool. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. GT500 is probably cooler than the Camaro. Probably doesn't drive as well, though. Oh, you know, I think the new Explorer is handsome enough, but I'm just not so sure it's really raising the bar. I think if the Telluride has proven anything, it's that Americans want to pretend to be tough with our SUVs, which is why the Telluride works. I'm not so sure the Explorer differentiates itself very much from the Toyota Highlander or the Honda Pilot or any of those kind of oblong shaped three row SUVs. Whereas the Telluride is immediately distinctive, which is why I think the Telluride works, whereas the Palisade doesn't work as well, at least from a aesthetic standpoint, which is a fancy way to say design, because I just felt like being really highbrow just then, as if I'm intelligent remotely. So we've sort of reached the end of this walkthrough, at least this part of the, uh, of the video, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of peek at the Atlanta Auto Show and some of the car models and manufacturers that are on display here. If you did like the video, please consider liking, consider subscribing if you aren't already subscribed, um, and be sure to, you know, like ring the bell for notifications because YouTube feels like showing you videos when YouTube feels like showing you videos. I feel like showing you my videos all the time. So if you would agree with that, ring the bell and then maybe you'll see them. Until next time, drive safe. Ride safe's not really applicable, but uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Wait, 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 British people told me not to do that. Peace. That's the right way.